Hi folks, I'm just sitting here with Gunnam talking about uh, what's going on with the land and the current situation here in Australia. We're just going to talk about how things are developing down there and, and where it's all going and what we can do with our precarious future at the moment. What do you think about uh, what's going on at the moment, Gunnam? I think that um, this is a time in the history of mankind where everyone who walks this planet needs to have their wits about them. They need to be very careful with people that have any rule, dominion or supposed authority over them. And they need to be very careful about the things that they believe. We're in a very, very dangerous time in history. We are, mate, we are. What's going on with the land down there? What are your plans in the face of all this? What do you got developing down there? Um, we'll continue to develop the community. Um, the community... Um, um, as AB likes to put it, was originally seen as a plan B that now becomes a plan A um, for a lot of people. Um, the COVID issues don't really affect what we're doing to a great degree um, because of the way everything is structured. We, we had um, uh, a belief, a solid belief that this sort of thing was about to happen so a lot of the contingencies that were put in place have been justified. Um, uh, and we feel vindicated with everything we're doing at the moment. Um, so yeah, I, I, as, as we move forward, I'm, you know, I'm just I'm being careful what I say because as I know there's, there's nut jobs out there who are labeling me a conspiracy theorist. Um, I base everything I, I think and say on fact, um, but nonetheless, you get still get people pointing the finger at you. Um, at the end of the day, the governments are about to expose themselves for what they really are particularly the corporate governments like Australia, the Commonwealth of Australia, are about to be exposed for the fraudsters that they are. There's a lot of people that are going to be waking up with a job. People should have a look at things like the Royal Titles and Styles Act, um, um, 1973, and have a, have a look at the fact that this Queen of Australia has had the right of succession removed from her heirs and successors. So what happens when Queen Elizabeth talks? Yeah? There's a lot of things that Australians need to start getting to grips with. Your government has been bullshitting to you and the times that we live in are very dangerous because they have been exposed. Millions of facts like that one have been exposed and they know that, that the wagons are circling and they're, they're, they're going in the pot for dinner. The time's come, Australians need to wake up. Um, I'm not going to tell people what they should believe but I, people should start looking at things and questioning everything twice we live in dangerous times mate what do you think their next move is going to be what what do you think their plans are with what they're doing here mate i'm not sure mate there's there's lots of there's lots of speculation um you know there's um you know conspiracies that we're heading for a republic you know um there's conspiracies that the um you know we need to be more concerned about the royal family um, and the bullshit going on there, then we need to be concerned about what's about to happen to us. Um, it's a hard question, mate. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to give advice that people are going to rely on because, um, you know, my opinion is my opinion, but it will be misconstrued, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, it seems like we're heading for, for China in Australia, is what it seems like. Oh, in a wicker basket, mate. And um, uh, steered by Kevin Rudd right across the China Sea. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> the Labor Party for working there. G getting back to uh, history about you want to talk about any history about that or you just want to leave that for the moment? About China. About uh, our involvement with this going back to the Howard government. Oh, well, you know, what's going on now in relation to the border closures? Yeah. Specifically, yes. Um, and I'm quite sure there are Liberal Party members out there who will be cringing when I talk about this one. Um, the Liberal Party plan from about 26, 28 years ago, um, which uh, included a future for Australia where the, the Commonwealth was effectively nutted um, and the seven states become seven independent sovereign cantons. Interesting. I'm sure, I'm sure that word will trigger a few fucking twitches in the faces of a few people. But <clears throat> um, what we're seeing now is the, the culmination of that part of their plan. Hmm. And this was the Howard government. Yes. Little Johnny Howard who disarmed yes, us is... with the Port Arthur massacre, which was so yeah. incredibly staged. Yeah. 
Uh, but then again, because you're relying on the facts and not the the propaganda, you're a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, it's funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it's funny how the conspiracy theorists seem to be proven right. Yeah, I've, I've had people off. posting videos of mine from 10 years ago going, wow, everything you said here, and I'm going, yeah, yeah, funny that, isn't it, you know? Yeah, isn't it? Um, but it's not a conspiracy theory. I mean, asking questions about what's going on is not a conspiracy theory. It's just asking questions because the government hasn't got any basis for what any of the things it's doing. And, um, you know, the power grabs that we've seen, like in, um, in Victoria with, with Daniel Andrews uh, wanting to introduce new legislation so he can extend the lockdown indefinitely and remove the very last safeguards that we have against rogue governments. I mean, if any other politician in the world was doing this, there'd be an outcry, and yet it's just going unnoticed here in Australia. Well, you know, Australians are more concerned about the football and the forex, mate. Okay. Yeah, it's unfortunate, whether, whether isn't it? The red, the red pill boots the blue pill at battle. But that's where, that's where things like the project you're doing down there um, take such a new significance. I mean, like, you know, when you started this, it was just this idea for this, you know, sovereign area where you could have it back on, you know, tribal culture and tribal law and just you know a, a way of getting out of that system but now it's become uh almost a, a necessity well, to do something like this the, the, it is but the, be, the best part about it to a large degree is that it, it, it is all state local and federal government compliant everything we're doing complies with every little piece of every little numbered passage that they have written um, we're not trying to cut any corners or, or deprive anything of anyone of anything that they rightly, rightfully deserve. Um, but what we're saying is we believe that there's a different way of doing things. Um, over a long period of time, um, a lot of uh, um, uh, different ideas have come together. Um, uh, they've been boiled, the dross has been swiped off the top and what we're left with is a really good pot of gold. And we believe that, that the project now, as it goes forward from today, um, is vastly different to what it was when it was first proposed, but it's a very tight ship. Um, you know, everything that we are required to comply with, we have complied with. On the other side of that coin, um, on the estate, it's a, uh, a gated community. Um, we intend to live according to the to the law of the land, the proper law of the land, the minimum law. Um, if people don't like that, just don't come inside the gates. It's not its not violent, it's not anarchist, it's not any of that. It's just people who want to live in harmony with the land, with each other, without the unnecessary bullshit. Hmm. Even saying it's not anarchist, I mean, people have a wrong opinion of the word anarchy. Yes, they do. Anarchy means no government. Yeah. You know, it just yeah. means self-governance. That's, that's um, exactly what I said. Anarchy is fine in a, in a society where you've got responsible people. Anarchy is the perfect type of society where you've got responsible people. You know, could we move into an anarchist society now with what we've got? No, because people aren't educated enough to do it. But this could be, well, you know, a transition into that knowledge, you know, if you will. Yeah. So, and I well, think that's exactly what it is. It's a transition. It's not anarchy. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a great, great thing you're doing here. So, um, what's something? What, what do you really want to say? What, what, what do you really want to get out to people right now? Oh, fuck, man, I'm not sure people want to hear that. Uh, <laughs> uh, get myself shot. Um, what I'd like to say is I'd like to just say to people wake up. You know, the time has come to start questioning everything. We are in a time and a space where we have to bunker down a bit and start looking after each other. You know, and that means if you've got to, cutting people off that, that kill you. That, that bring you down, you know? Um, it's a hard one. But the, t the time's come. You know? What you're doing there on this land as well, I mean, you've got this, this parcel of land here that you've got this whole project going, but with what you're doing with the OSTF and everything that you've got going on with that, if other people in Australia have got their own land that they own and they want to get outside and, and do what you're doing, they can simply like join with the OSTF. I mean, it doesn't have to be well, no, um, what, just... What, what they would do, for example, if someone had land somewhere and they wanted to do a treaty with their local tribe depending on what area they're in look your tribe up and by tribe i do not mean land council mm. i do not mean any crown created entity of any sort mm. i'm talking about the tribe the tribe 
The tribe is not associated with the crown. Yeah, but okay. what I'm saying is it's possible for people, landowners Absolutely. in Australia, now to Absolutely. be able to move their, their um, custodianship interest, yeah. out of the crown jurisdiction yeah. and into tribal jurisdiction. Well, the fact is it isn't in crown jurisdiction. That's, that's, that's the ironic thing about it. It never has been. Yeah. The crown has never had any right to deal with the tribe's estates. And that being said, and I'll repeat this, I say this every time because I don't want people to misconstrue this either, there is no intention at all for any landholder, because that's what Australians are, anybody with a piece of paper title, they're a landholder, um, not a landowner, there is no intention to deprive them of anything. Um, in fact, in the fullness of time, what they would realise is that um, they are going to be given, not taken from. Okay, um, but there has to be a transition. We have to go. If we're going to, if we're going to move forward, right? They want to talk about the new normal. For me, the new normal is jam your fucking lies up your ass. Okay, the royal family, the crown of England, the crown and the right of corporation called Australia, whatever title you want to put on it, it's time to just sit at the table and act honourably. Okay, the time's come. We can see through the shit. We know what all the we, we know who all the lawyers are. We know about all the fraud. We know about changing the government from a government of the people to a corporate entity, you know, and changing the constitution. And when you did that, you couldn't even get that right. You know, you screwed that up by by removing any any heir or successor to your queen in your parliament. That's how dumb you fucks are. Okay, come and sit down with the the, the real sovereigns on country. Um, they might be surprised to know that. Um, the Queen actually handed a, a legal instrument, um, an ancient legal instrument, to a tribal man some years ago, and those in the know will know, um, and admitted to him in a barehanded handshake um, that, that he was the sovereign on his country. Same as Prince Charles did last year when he went and sat down with our Yadaki healer and, and admitted that Prince Charles addressed him as Your Highness. Okay, and that was someone who you must accept understands protocol and royal procedures and the sovereign status of things. Was acknowledging that tribal man on his tribal country, country on this continent, as the sovereign, as his mother has. The only people who who don't are effectively the corporate government of Australia, who have been exposed with their pants down and their head face first in the trough. Okay. They won't admit it, but it doesn't matter that they don't admit it. They've been exposed. Their time's up. They need to come and sit at the table because there's a better way forward. Um, this is just a small example of a, of, a, of a greater thing that can happen. There is a much better way forward, and it includes everybody, and everybody gets treated equally. And, you know, for example, um, I can't be like Jenna Reinhardt and get a $2 billion tax break despite making billions of dollars in profit. Um... You know, she didn't put that back into jobs. She didn't do anything with it. That mineral come from this continent? Well, if for the meantime you're going to be mining that shit, the benefit of that is going to be coming back to country. It's not going to be going into her bank vault and it's not going to be going into a Singaporeese bank vault. It won't be going into a fucking Chinese, American or British one. It'll be coming back here and it'll be used on country for restorative processes. We've got enough money. If we, if we have to continue mining for a period, then okay, let's do that. But let's put the resources into um, rehabilitation of the country for a few years and pay people to become proper understanders and custodians of the land they live on in a real pragmatic and a real spiritual sense. Let's try that for a fucking way forward. Let's make that the new normal. Because that's all we're trying to do. Something along those lines. Not trying to... We're not going to... Um, it's not going to be a, a what's, where was that fucking nutter in America, Dave Koresh and Waco? Waco? Yeah, Waco. Yeah. Nah, sorry, not interested. No. Um, we're all same people. Mm. People may not like what we say. Mm. Um, you know, I had some people having a shot at me recently and when I just opened up and sprayed some, some bullshit in their direction, they, they cried about it. And I said to them, well, okay, fine, now you understand why... We're saying what we're saying, you know. Um, yeah, no, nah, it's time. It's time for it's time for Australia. At least I don't know about the rest of the planet. But it's time for Australia to uh, uh, create a better new normal, not just a new normal. I didn't like the old normal. It was pretty fucked up, you know. It wasn't really normal. <laughs> <laughs> pretty fucking messy. <laughs>
I don't know if we need to say any more. Yeah, I know. Mate, there's a lot to say, mate. You know, like, people are waking up. Yeah. You know, people are starting to look. You know, and I keep saying it, mate. We've got a Prime Minister who flew a pedophile halfway around the planet to sit down at dinner with the President of the United States. Now, let's just assume that all the people that called Trump a dickhead are correct. That dickhead told our fuckwit to take his mate and fuck off. Pardon the French. Okay? That's what you've got governing you. That's what you've got. If you're Australian, that's what you've got governing you. How many suppressions and what orders are there in the federal parliament in relation to pedophilia? Yeah, 39 or something? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Pardon me? How the fuck can you even get a suppression order on information relating to pedophilia in parliament house? Mm-hmm. How do you do that? But anyway, and that's why, and I'm not a redneck, I'm not a tool, I'm not a, I'm, I'm nothing other than I am me. You don't come at me, I don't come at you. You know what I mean? I, I want to live peaceably. But I won't, I won't be ruled by a pedophile or his mates. Mm. You know? Yeah, that, that's, that's what I tell people. I certainly won't be spoken down well. to or locked up or, or, or locked down by him. Mm. Yeah, that's what I tell people as well. And that, that's what you need to look at. That's what you've got running the country. Yep. You know, you got a, you got a, a massive group of pedophiles and, and criminal hell, parasites. You know. I mean, you know, look at the track record of these people. That that's who's locking you down. That's who wants to give you this vaccine. You know, you know, and they're putting new laws in place in South Australia where now they can they're testing for COVID at schools, so they can test your child at school and they can take your child from school, put it in a quarantine centre, and you don't get to see your child until they tell you you can see your child again. This is in South Australia, which well, is the pedophile capital of the world. Exactly, but the problem with that is that there's a federal law that governs the issue of slave holding and slave trading. Now, you can't take someone else's child from them on any basis other than with appropriate court orders, right? And even then, that's questionable. Um, but you can't take my child from me, for example, because my child is my child, right? And you don't have the right to take my child unless you own my child or you are exercising an ownership right over my child which makes you a slaveholder at law. The penalty for that is 25 years. Okay? It's part of Australian law. So they need to be really fucking careful. The police officers going out and doing this and blindly following the bullshit that's being sprayed around need to be careful because they're the ones that are doing the deed. You know, it's, it's really, really, really ugly because the time is coming when all this stuff is going to be laid bare and all the people that have committed the, the senior serious crimes you're going to be dragged before various jurisdictions across the country and made to answer for it. The time is coming. You know? You know, the, the thing is that a body can only exist, and whether we're talking about a human body or a body politic or a, a, a population body, can only exist with an infection until the infection overcomes the body, in which case it dies. The only way to stop the body from dying is that we have to fight the infection and get rid of it. And the time's come for a big shot of penicillin. Yeah. In my opinion, we need to clean the shit out. Mm, I agree you completely. Um, I've got people wanting to f- um, fund class actions against the government. Um, I think we should be taking every step we can against what's happening personally. Um, I think people should absolutely be saying no in the face of all of this. And realise that, yeah, I mean, the time is now. The time is now. It's time for men to be men, stand up for themselves, stand up for their community, stand up for their women, and to uh, ask the right questions and, and push back mm. in every way we can. You know, yeah. Take whatever steps are necessary to express a loss of confidence in these uh, people's ability to govern. I have no confidence whatsoever in any member of the federal parliament or the state parliaments. And it's time for people to express that. Um, if we can't do it under their law, well, perhaps the entire country should treat it with the tribes and we'll do it under tribal law. That'd be even, that'd even be more pretty to see. Yeah, yeah either way the time's come. You know. And there's there's no need for violence, there's no need for threats and intimidation and abuse, you know, from the governments or the police, you know. The police have to realise that, you know, generally from what I've seen around the place, mate, if there's if there's violence um, publicly the police are usually pretty well involved in it. Oh, they're the ones yeah. who cause it. They, you know, when there's a march, they send in the riot police to start a riot. That's yeah. why they call them the riot police. You know, well, it's, it's like what happened down in Canberra when uh, Julia Gillard lost the fucking crystal sand. You know? 
That was the that biggest was, charade. That was classic, mate. That, that was, was the biggest charade, like seeing all those cops jumping around and pretending there was a crowd and all that. It was it was like the worst theatrics I've ever seen. It was laughable, right. you know. I got some I got some interesting footage of that that our people took. You know, we had we had a film crew there. Yeah. And um, yeah, we got some very good footage. It was interesting at the time they were going to um, the police were going to charge them and follow through on a prosecution against one young Aboriginal fellow or tribal fellow from up near Brisbane and um, we sort of shot some of our footage back to them and said listen you go hard with yours <laughs> yeah there was some violence there all right but it wasn't the protesters yeah no, no it, it was the police um, and there were a couple of undercover, undercover coppers there one bloke particularly in a studded denim jacket um, getting in between the police and the protesters because even he thought it was getting out of hand and we've got that very clearly in footage. You can see the, the, the eye signals and the hand signals between him and, and three other senior officers in uniform. But the whole thing, mm. the whole thing, clear as clear. Mm. You know? mm. Again, that was a setup. Yeah, all staged, mate. Yeah. They stage it all. Yeah. Media propaganda to get what they want through. Yeah. Anything else you want to say, Mark? Uh, here you go, the Broncos, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, listen, mate, I don't mind backing a loser. <laughs> nah, look, mate, they're, they're, oh, they're, right. they're just having a rough trot. I think everyone's having oh, a rough mate. trot right now. No? Yeah. I think the whole whole world's having a rough trot. All right, brother, we'll leave it there. Thanks for the chat. Hey, mate, I remember three or four years ago, Parramatta were doing it pretty tough. I don't know, mate, I don't follow. Me neither. No idea. <laughs> Thanks, brother. No, no.